you know, basically, let's start with the offense. Let's start on the offensive side here. And here's some tweets I grabbed from today. And I think they're just interesting ones in general because they kind of give you an idea of, of maybe the direction that we're going in. So Mark Whipple, he said that Casey Thompson is the number one guy right now in the quarterback room, and that could change tomorrow. Uh, Garrett Nelson talking about the quarterback says they're still fast. Maybe I'm just slow. But he's referring to them, you know, how the, the quarterback position hasn't lost a step just because Martinez isn't here. Running back, Amir Johnson describes the new offensive coaching staff as energetic. That's what we needed. And Parker Gabriel writes how Frost said he was impressed with the way the offensive line came off the ball today. He also spent a good chunk of practice talking about the young, guy, the young group on offense. But the one I want to highlight first is inside linebacker Nick Henrik talking about how Indy's offense is a little different. One change is a lot of the downhill running game. He highlighted that. We're having a downhill running game. And when Frost was asked about that, this was his response. No. Uh, if he noticed a difference, I think it, it it's a, probably a compliment to the guys up front and the guys coaching the guys up front. Uh, the schemes weren't different. Um, hopefully they felt a little different to the defense. Now, Rob, when I hear that, what I think about is the, the video or the interview you did a couple weeks ago with Kevin Williams. And Williams, you asked him about that about, you know, what do you think the changes could be with Riola and everything? And, and I just want to play for a second what that was. A lot of points on the board and playing physical. You know, win, lose, or draw, they're going to feel us in the morning, especially up front. If we're coming off the ball, we're running at you. We're here to, you know, be aggressive. We're here to compete. It's going to be a fight all day, all long, all night, you know. So that's really the intent, and that's what I love about Riola. Uh, even with his technique he's teaching, you got to be in shape. You know, everything is, you got to go. You got to go. You got to go. We got to run. Everything's running. Uh, there's no choppy steps. And uh, it's physical. It's physical football, hard nosed old school football. And that's what I love. That's what I fell in love with watching as a kid. And that's what I kind of was naturally doing when I would play. And I had to kind of go revert back to other habits and techniques. So going back to like what you kind of know naturally feels a lot better. And I think a lot of guys in the room like it too. That became a theme of today was it's physical. The offensive line's coming off the ball. And the way that Kevin talked about it back then too was that this style that, that Rayola is bringing, is it gap blocking? Is it man blocking? Is it different from zone? I, you know, look, there are great zone blocking teams out there. I, I, I'm not here to pick and choose one style. I, I just know that we're going to move people. Bob Sledge, Sam Sledge's uh, dad and former player here, Bob Sledge talked about how every drill that Rayola, Rayola does goes 10 yards because we're going to move people. All right, Dave, let's start with you here. You've been watching stuff today. You've been reading stuff today. You get this impression that there's physical approach to the to the game seems to be part of this. It's not just some, you know, fancy pass happy offense here. What what does that make you feel like when you start to read that and see that? And and you know, is that is this real or we, or is this just talk? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 hilarious because it's like day one of spring football, and now we're already like the offense is like so much better. <laughs> uh, but I do, I, you know, I think what I get. I, I like the depth that we have at a lot of different positions on offense, mm -hmm. right? So like on the running back side, you know, we had a ton of depth last year and we worked through it all. So I think it's good. We have it this year. He, he talked a lot. Frost talked a lot about, yeah, and he called him jock. So I gotta be like in with jock, right. Or, um, <laughs> that he's like, he's growing up and maturing. And so like, I, I love Yant. I've been a huge Yant guy. Like that Northwestern game is life changing. I thought that was phenomenal. So between Yant and Ramir and Grant and Gabe Irvin, you know, AJ Allen's step, if he steps up, you know, I, I think we've got some great depth there. And if the line can be coached to that level, um, you know, by Rayola, I think that's phenomenal. I do think there's a lot more talent on the O-line than, you know, people give it credit for. I think everyone kind of freaked out that all we were doing is stockpiling quarterbacks and wide receivers. But, you know, I, I think there's, I think there's a plenty, ton of talent there. Um, mm -hmm. But I also like, I guess the, the other piece of it, well, the other tweet that like really stuck out today that I'm sure we're going to get to, but the Casey Thompson from, from Whipple, I thought was mm -hmm. huge, right? Like for him to just say, Casey Thompson's our guy when there was three months of like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And he just is like, he's the best. Mm -hmm. I think it you know reaffirms a lot of that. I think I've, you know, I think he's one of the best passers in the country. And I think it's phenomenal that we got him. I think it says a ton about Whipple. I think it says a ton about our offense and the trust that Casey Thompson would have to leave Texas to come here. Um, that probably like single-handedly got me the most, you know, optimistic for it because, you know, I think as we've talked about before, come, you know, Logan Smothers, who did a great job in the Iowa game in that fourth quarter, as they started to take away a lot of the option, you know, the option game, we saw a lot of like, uh-oh, 
you know, I don't know if he can throw over the top. And Casey Thompson can. He can throw the deep ball. He can throw the slant. You know, he's got a quick release. He knows the offense. He's experienced. He can come in and play right away. So, you know, I think between the depth at, at, at wide, you know, wide receiver, running back, and, and QB, I feel, I feel really good about, you know, mm -hmm. where that's well, going. You know, Whipple made the statement today, too, where he goes, James, I can change tomorrow, right? It, it can change tomorrow that we're getting guys now on film. This is the first chance they're going to start to see their own film. But he also mentioned how, you know, Thompson's not brand new here in Nebraska. He's been here for a couple months now. And what they've been doing in the offseason up to this point, individual quarterbacks were giving their stats and, and keeping them up to date. He can't be watching certain things, but they can still be giving him, you know, uh, up-to-date stats. And, Rob, you've mentioned in the past how – how many catches these receivers are going to catch from their quarterbacks before they ever step on the field today. So when somebody says, Oh my gosh, how, you know, there's no, there's no competition. They've already given it to Thompson. What's wrong. And I've read that today. I've read angry Husker fans that were already saying that, uh, you know, how can they just give him the, the starting spot already? Well, up until this point, he's the starter based off of what they, the credentials or, or whatever they needed to see up to now. And now it's the next phase. And look, I have no doubt in my mind, if Thompson goes out there and incompletes the next 30 passes and, and throws a bunch of interceptions and fumbles the ball, he won't be the starter. He's not going to do that, though. Yeah, that's there's the thing, right? And I mean, let's be performance honest. Performance will matter. Yeah, let, let's be honest. Of that roster, who has the most experience playing in, in games right now? I mean, at, at the Division One level in a Power 5 conference. Like yeah, who? Why, why go after Thompson if you had a bunch of experience? I mean, at it, that? if it know. wasn't assumed that he was going to be our starter when they brought him in by your by you, and when I say you, I mean whoever it was commenting negative about how can you make him your starter, I think you need to do some like inner searching on your uh, – like soul searching or something to, to truly understand – like why it is that you have all this pent up negativity about anything that happens with this program. And I'm being a hundred percent honest because if they brought in Casey, the day they brought in Casey Thompson, they, they could have put out the depth chart and put him at number one. There, there was no doubt in my mind. There was no doubt in your mind, honky Dave, well, I'm guessing. I mean, I, I follow you on Twitter. No way in your mind, Mr. Minnesota over here. I know you, feel the same way too. I mean, there's absolutely no way as a Husker fan that you can bring in Casey Thompson and not think to yourself, he's going to be our starter day one. It's his position to lose regardless of what they told Perk. He's a program. He's a, yeah, he's a program changing QB. I think, I think, yeah, he's, I think he's phenomenal. His talent is unbelievable. He's going to set a standard. That's why we're looking at year one. Year one of frost is going to be the best year. There was also, I mean, there was, there was no, I, there was no bigger fan and bigger supporter of Adrian than, than I was, right? I was like the biggest backer. And I, I, I fully believed until literally like the last game that I was like, he's going to turn it around and he just never did. But <laughs> his thing about his like shortcomings, right? Like the second that he hurt his ankle and the second that any time he's like, his leg gets hurt, it, it, it was done. Right. Um, and you know, so all of a sudden, if you get that elite level passing with the downhill running game that you're talking about, honky, I think that's where you start to get excited. And they're like, we haven't even, Somehow we haven't even talked about the wide receivers. I mean, then you start talking yeah. about Trey Palmer, Omar Manning, Xavier Betts, the coldest, Alante Brown, you know, Fedone, if he starts to like, you know, if he's able to be healthy vocal, like, like he's got guys to throw to. Mm -hmm. I, the biggest thing that I want, and I don't have, nothing has changed in my mind from the second that we got Thompson to today and that nothing's going to change moving forward. I want competition. I, I don't want anything given to anyone. I want competition and Purdy, you know, came to Nebraska after Thompson. So he came here, you know, he, you know, he's not just going to sit there and, and sit on his hands and, and say, yeah, it's someone else's position. So I want competition with good players compete and, the, and let the best, let the best guy win out of that. I like the fact that we still have quarterbacks that have mobility. That was a concern of mine a little bit when we first got Whipple, because as we started to find out here today too, I truly believe this is supposed to be a combination of the best things that Frost offense did with the things that Whipple can bring, which, by the way, were probably some of the worst things that we did. Some of our yeah. passing game was the worst thing, but some of the running game that we had, which includes quarterback mobility still. I mean, I don't know that we're going to be running as many options and stuff, and we've said that in the past. I, I love mobile quarterbacks, and yet we don't need our quarterback running 15 to 20 times a game. That's not helpful. But mobility at quarterback with a, a passing scheme like Whipple's going to bring in here, and the running game that, you know, the, the, the line being more aggressive now and the running game coming behind it, I mean, that's a good start. Jim, I've, I'll just, I'm just i open-ended to you right now. Offensively, we just <laughs> talked about the quarterbacks there. And, that, you know, and as Dave was saying, the, the, the wide receiver depth, the running back depth, I mean, where are you feeling right now offensively through one day? 
of spring ball. <laughs> One day in. So yeah, I think there's One a, day. I I think that the, the key, key part for me was, I guess the, the, you know, Frost and Whipple did essentially clarify or verify the thought that we had a few weeks ago, that it's going to be a blend of uh, Frost's running game with a, you know, uh, I guess a new offensive line philosophy up front, right? I think the one he always wanted um, is trying to get out of Greg Austin, right? And trying to get out of those offensive linemen, but paired that with the pro passing um, philosophies of Whipple. And so, you know, if, if in fact, you know, Rayla can get those guys up front to, to block the way that, that Frost wants to, and again, it's one, one, one practice in, but it sounds like that's what he's seeing. I think Frost said it, you know, Henrich said it, um, yeah, I think the offensive line said it as well. So I think that sounds good. I think you looked at 2018, right? The one thing we did well in 2018 is we ran inside zone really well. That was Frost's best offensive line, right? He had Tanner mm-hmm. Farmer, he had Foster, he had his best line. And we were able to run a good running back. I, I mean, he's obviously in the NFL right now with Zigbo, but we ran inside zone a ton. And that was very successful. We haven't done that since 2014. So if we can – if you can do that and have a basic run game, a, a downhill run game, I think as uh, mm. was it Henry who said that today. I mean, if you can do that, then you can basically build off of that with your two tight end sets. Your, you know, you got mm. a bunch of receivers. Dave mentioned uh, that, that have come in now. Um, so I like that. But the one thing I, that I like today from Frost that he mentioned was that he saw an attitude. He saw an energy in a, in a different um, bite, for lack of a better term. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but. You know, I think we've heard the last four years the defense was the one that was out there barking, the one that would you know get up and talk in the offensive face, and there wasn't a whole lot of pushback from the offense. It wasn't that wasn't that that yard dog, if you will, that that would you know stand up to these guys. And I I think that's been missing. I love Adrian, just like Dave said, but I think Adrian at times is a little bit too nice. I think I saw him yell at his alignment one time in four years, you know, and so I, I hope that you know with that. Again, it's one day, but I hope that there is some some attitude, some you know, to use a Whipple term, uh, you know, some prickness there, right? Someone that's going to get nasty, and 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 I hope that aggressive line play that that Rail is bringing in creates that nastiness that Frost wanted last year. He talked about that last mm-hmm. year. I want someone's going to be nasty, you know, hey, and Jim. I want offensive line that's going to be nasty. I haven't seen that, so for me, that's my biggest thing is I want to see an attitude in the offense. Okay, so let's have that attitude. Tell me a little bit about what you were hearing beforehand with Applewhite talking about the bell cow. How important is it to have that bell cow running back? Or what was his take on that right now? Again, yeah, day so one the question was about, you know, if, if, do you want a bell cow or do you, if you have a bell cow by the end of this of, of spring, is that a good thing? Or, or how do you view that? And he said, you know, essentially, if that is the case and there ends up being one bell cow, then I haven't done my job to develop, you know, the rest of the guys because you're going to need three guys in the Big Ten. You're, it's just the fact of – the physicality of this league. You can't just go April, got the bell cow. We're good. You know, it's go ahead and roll into, you know, fall camp with, you know, with uh, whoever it is, you're going to have to have a number of guys. I mean, here in Minnesota, you guys saw, I mean, we had the fourth, the third and fourth running backs run for a hundred yards against us because the first uh, two guys got hurt. So you're, you're going to have to have a number of guys develop. And we have like seven running backs. I think it is. I mean, is it six or seven running backs? So, you know, hopefully within that group, you have three or four that you can depend on going forward. I think we just added another running back while you were talking, Jim. That's how many we have. Yeah, you know, we, we did add today. I was just joking before you got on, Rob. Um, but Dave's favorite favorite player is going to be playing running back, it sounds like, it, today from, from the back. So. Brody yeah. Bell, baby. Brody, Brody Bell is going to be yeah. a running back. That's, that's, <laughs> what, we got. that's what it sounded like. So, yeah, add another one. We got the depth, I don't know, baby. man. We got the depth. I, I mean, Jim, you you were on with us after the spring game last year, and um, you saw my I, I don't even know if I should be saying it's a family. You saw my man boner over Yant, and I mean, the, I'm telling you, he's it, it kind of shocked me that um, Frost was talking about how his conditioning last year wasn't where they wanted it to be, and that was one of the reasons why he didn't get playing time. Which is the first time I've heard anybody really say that. I mean, literally from the horse's mouth, right? I mean, this that's the guy that made that decision. I hadn't heard that before. I'd heard like hints of it here and there, but um, he sounded really high on Yant this year too. And I, I see Yant as a 
bell cow type. If you're going to be running it up the middle and right, right at, down their throats, he's the guy that's going to get you. I mean, he's going to, you know, what is it? Three yards in a cloud of dust. I mean, that's going to be Yant right there. I mean, we were watching him in the spring game. Just, I mean, honky and I were up there staring at each other lovingly, just watching this kid carry like six guys on his back through spring game. So, I mean, well, that's my, that's my prediction right now. But, yeah, you know. and what we don't want to see is Yant at halftime of a game like against Purdue where he has four carries for 50 yards and ends up with six carries for 60 yards, right? I mean, yeah. that just doesn't even make sense. You know, if you're if you're having success, stick stick with something that you're having success with. Now, I, I, I couldn't give you a depth chart right now at running back. I just know that they're going to have depth, compete. There's going to be new guys coming in also in the, the summer for what it's worth that, that could get into that competition. But I'm, I'm really big on – if you're not here right now in spring, it's hard for me to envision somebody really cracking a depth chart if you're not going through everything they're doing right now. Here's my um, question on Yant, though. I mean, and, and I was watching the, the Iowa game – for the first times I was at the game, but where was Yant in the Iowa game? I mean, that was his chance. I mean, he wasn't, he didn't play at Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, there's some things that went on there prior to that game, but you know, he had his chance. He had, that was the game for Yant. I mean, he hadn't played really since Northwestern, but um, I mean, he had a couple first rounds, but again, I was a good defense, but I didn't see a ton from Yant in that game to give me, I guess I'm not as high on Yant as the rest of you guys. And it's, I think I'm kind of wait and see with him. I mean, there's so much that happened for him to, to get to the point where he actually was playing last year. I think Frost talked about his maturity today and how his maturity has improved quite a bit. Um, but I don't know if he's that guy. I mean, it, I hope he is. I hope someone emerges, right? Sure. But I, I just, for me, I think I need to see a little more from him. Yeah. I think we have, we've got a bunch of those guys that it, it's made, I think, in particular, the last few years frustrating. You know, I, I think Omar Manning is another that I'd put up there that, like, I've been waiting for him to be, like, Randy Moss. I thought he was, right? I thought he was going to be, like, the best wide receiver ever. And he is, when he catches the ball, is phenomenal. Like, that Oklahoma catch was incredible. He's got a ton of deep balls that he goes and gets. But I thought he'd be a 10, 12 catch guy a game, and he's not. I, I thought Yant would be Jerome Bettis, and he's close, but he's also, like, not, right? So, there, you know, and yeah. then you go back to, like, the Maurice Washingtons of the world, and you're like, oh, my God, this is the fastest, best player of all time, and then they, like, peter off. So, you know, I, I think Frost takes a lot of risks in the recruiting game, and he gets these guys that are, like, high-risk, high-reward re high type players like them that have, you know, for whatever reason, off-the-field issues that – you know, prevent them from going to call it Alabama or any of the other top tier programs. And I think then you kind of see what's happening now is then there's like, okay, he, you know, Yant lost Frost trust mm -hmm. and Omar Manning lost, you know, he, he had the issues last year and like race Washington has hit his issues. And those are just a few of the guys that you're like, these guys are explosive, unbelievable talents that for mm -hmm. whatever reason, Frost just has not been able to get them to where they can be. And so that, that, you know, I think everybody struggles with that one. It's like you have unbelievable raw talent on the field. Just getting them to that next level has, has seemed to, you seem to struggle with that. Well, you know, let's talk about the other position there, the other skill position, the wide receivers group, and we can throw tight ends with this too. But, you know, for all the questions with running back rotation in the past, there's questions about wide receiver rotation in the past. This is not – intended to be a knock on the previous coaches, but I can't help, but somebody said it earlier, it's like we have these grownups in the room, these, these, these pros at what they do. And just before we start talking about wide receivers, let's listen to how uh, Frost brought up uh, Mickey today. We all got a lot of guys in the receiver room and they're not getting away with much uh, right now um, with Mickey in there. So they know the expectations and the standards and they know there's going to be a lot of competition in the room because uh, we got a lot of guys on a lot of depth. Uh, so, uh, today was day one. They're going to have 15 practices this spring and a bunch of time over summer and fall to uh, try to battle it out to see who the main guys are going to be, and uh, they're off to a good start. When you think about the wide receivers, we've got some talent, right? I, to your point, Dave, I think maybe Manning would be an example of someone you took. I don't, I don't know if it was a huge reach, but you reached to get him, right? He was a JUCO guy, so there was obvious, you know, there were reasons why maybe he couldn't go to an Alabama type of school. But, you know, Xavier Betts was a great recruit to get in, right? And and probably could have gone to a lot of schools other than Nebraska. So we were getting some good players in here, but development. Let's talk about development. This receivers coach walks in here and has Chase and Jefferson, two of the top three, four receivers in the in the NFL right now. This is a guy that has 
you know, as a, as a position coach, as players now, you know, nationally, he's well-known, great recruiter down there. The, his offensive coordinator just had the Blitnikoff Award winner and a Heisman, you know, finalist. So, Dave, you brought up the receivers earlier. What gets you excited right now just from a depth perspective and also from the development? Let's, let's focus on that, too. Development and depth. What, what are you liking right now? Well, I think you hit on it, right? I think you've got Omar Manning and Xavier Betts, who are just untapped, unbelievable amounts of potential sky's the limit type players that you see bursts of it. You know, you, you see Betts get chased down along, you know, he chased down a deep ball. You see Betts take a ball, you know, take it 70, 80 yards against Northwestern to the house. He's got it. But like the consistency hasn't been there. Same with Omar Manning. You know, Alante Brown's another one. Like you get him the ball, like what can he do with it? I, I just feel like we have not, we have unbelievable talent on that side and just have not reached their potential but or, or even close. But then I, I would gets me even more excited, the fact that he's bringing in his guys, like DeColdis, mm. right? DeCold, you bring in a DeColdis on top of Xavier Betts and Omar Manning, and they're like, oh, shoot, like this is the new standard. Like this is the level that we got to elevate to because this guy's going to play mm-hmm. you know, this year or next year if I don't start to, to step my game up. So, you know, I, I think that the, you know, the four-star guys and the five-stars he's shooting for, I think is going to help elevate that game. And I think he can coach too. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he, he can coach, he can mentor. Um, he clearly brings a cachet and like a swagger to him that I think gives him a ton of credibility in that room. Um, so yeah, if you get the, man, if you get the potential out of those guys and then you got Casey Thompson thrown to him, I mean, I think it was Rob. I think maybe you forwarded me. Yeah, but Davon Hall, who's the junior from Bellevue right now, who's the four-star in-state kid a year from now, referred to Mickey as like a you know a mentor already. And and an idol. He said an idol. idol. Is that an it? Idol. Or maybe it was you, Jim, that yeah. said that to me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Jim, what are you thinking right now? I guess as as you see that room, I include the tight ends too there with if you'd like also with what Beckton's working with. You know what? For the first time, it, it's kind of funny. It's, it, you get a new coach in like Mickey Joseph and um I don't feel like I have to worry about being developed anymore to, to kind of Dave's point. Like, I don't like, I like Will Nixon. I liked him in the spring game, but he let, he leaves. And I'm like, eh, no big deal. Right. Because I, I believe so much in what Mickey Joseph is doing and his ability to develop guys. If guys can't make it, and there's going to be guys that transfer out are like, Oh man, that would have been nice to have him here. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care because I know the guys that are going to be there. They're going to be competing. Come, come, you know, Northwestern game and come next year are the guys that have made it through this gauntlet or made it through his, his development. And the guys that want to be there are going to be there. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm most excited about um, Xavier Betts because I think, I think Betts is not only the most gifted player um, on Nebraska's team, as far as wide receivers, I think he's one of the best in, in the big 10, if mm-hmm. he can be developed in, in that way. I mean, he's got the, he's one of the fastest guys in the team Physically, he's one of the most gifted players. He's one of the top rated players come out of, you know, come out of high school, but he just hasn't had the consistency both on and off the field. And so what Mickey brings is that accountability. I think you mentioned um, Jamar Chase or Jefferson, but Mickey actually had those guys in his office, you know, mm-hmm. in LSU studying for tests. I mean, he is going to, he is going to basically, you know, entirely encompass these guys and say, I'm serious about you on the football field. And in the classroom, in your relationships, I mean, I'm going to be there, and we're going to we're going to get after this. And I think you've heard some of the snippets about Betts being a much better player, much better. He's dialed in, and and that's mm-hmm. what I want. I want I want a coach who's going to dial these guys in. So, um, you know, we brought in some players like uh, I, um, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda, who I think is going to be really really good. Um, in that slot, Lante Brown has been mentioned a number of times, and today was mentioned by Frost by name. He was the one guy he brought up was Lante Brown. Mm. What did so, you think? What did you think of Omar playing some slot today? Because Whipple likes bigger guys in the slot too. What did you think of that? I think he's experimenting with different things. I think Whipple mentioned having guys play multiple wide receiver spots. They have to know all mm-hmm. the spots. So I think he's just kind of seen. I mean, Whipple's big thing, as we know, is finding which which pieces work best. Right? That's his. His, his kind of MO is is figuring out the 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 spots in the offense, the guys that can do things and 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 where we can get them the ball. So I think he's probably tinkering around with that. Um so we'll see. I I think me personally, I think Alante Brown and Isaiah Castaneda sound the best in the slot, but if it's Omar Manning, it's Omar Manning. You know, I, I think that's I think he's got so many different opportunities now to figure out the weapons he's got. And then Dave mentioned the coldest and Victor Jones, these other guys are gonna be here. 
We have got guys from last Neville, year. Neville, I mean, yeah, geez. Neville, uh, Sean Hardy was a guy that uh, Grimes, yes. LSU off of Grimes. I mean, they they've got to get going right away because if they don't, they're gonna get passed up by by these guys that, that Mickey's bringing in. So, um, no, I think it's good. I think tight ends. I, I'm excited to see. You know, we've got Vokalek out for the spring, so it's an opportunity for James Carney for AG Rollins, who yep. was mentioned by name as the guy that uh, Austin Allen thought was going to make a big jump. Um, Fedoni, of course, but I think there's a lot of opportunity for these guys from the spring to really make a name for themselves, and, and we'll and we'll see how it kind of shakes out. Mm-hmm. Rob, well, you have yeah, I was just gonna say like one of the words, and and we haven't used this buzzword yet, but um, I mean, a perfect example of the style of coach that Joseph is. Um, one, his expectations have been set publicly. I'm sure they've been, I know they've been set privately. Um, you know, all of his players know exactly what is going to be expected of them, what kind of work's going to be put in, what, um, you know, what, what type of players are going to be again, the special teams that I, that I mentioned earlier, but another big factor in here too. And, and the, if you, if you look at like the way that, and, and this is going to kind of be weird, but his wife, Priscilla, and she's really active on Twitter, but you listen to her talk or radio shows, everything, her involvement with the players in general speaks volumes to the type of coach that Joseph is to me personally, because mm-hmm. it shows that they take the family approach. And I don't know how else to put that. But, you know, you can tell, I mean, some of the players that, I mean, you want to talk about dropping names. She was dropping some of these players names from LSU that, that she just has these great relationships with, you know, and they were playing in the Super Bowl and all these things. And it's like, and she still talks to them and they still text her, you know, she was like making dinner for these kids, having them over to the houses for barbecues, things like that. And these are things over the last four years that you haven't really heard a lot about in the Husker culture, but now you're starting to see it kind of come through a little bit more. And for me, that's the kind of positivity. That's the kind of, uh, you know, things that I want to see as a fan, because you know that, again, if these kids are buying into this program, then they're going to be here because they know what's expected of them and they know exactly how it's going to be. But it's also going to allow other people on the outside to see it, the transparency that's available for recruits and why people want to come here and play. And like, like, we said earlier that one kid um, right here in Nebraska that, you know, Joseph is his idol. Like when's the last time that you heard any recruit say that about a coach for the Huskers? I mean, it's yeah, all they guaranteed. say about Frost. All, they pretty much say about Frost all the time. Well, I mean, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. To be, to be fair, but you know, they weren't coming here though. I mean, well, I, until I now, God, right. You, so you had something I think is kind of interesting too. And Priscilla said, you know, she's like, I didn't realize that Mickey was so big when I came back here, people were like freaking out. Like, your husband, oh my gosh. Like, and she's like, I, I started to come to realize just what kind of presence he has. But one thing I like about Mickey Joseph, you guys listen to him talk. He's done, I think, five or six different interviews. But he's very self-aware of what kind of presence he has. And he understands the 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 aura or the you know his ability to you know get into a doorway pretty easily with with who he is. But if you notice, he is very he is very quick to um, point out um, Frost's, um, expertise or Frost's, uh, great abilities. He, he definitely ties in, Hey, look, I know you're excited about me and that's great, but I'm excited about Frost and I'm excited about what he's got going on. I'm excited about being part of his team, about getting this thing over the hump. And he's very, he's very, um, I don't think it's smart, but he, I think it's just who he is, but he ties everything into, to Frost. And I think that's a, it's an important piece, especially in Omaha to make sure that, that, you know, I mean, let's face it. Frost is uh, what I mean. His record is what fifteen and twenty nine. So um, I, I like that that part of Mickey. I like his ability to to have the awareness that hey, I'm I'm kind of larger than life right now, but I want to make sure people know that I am I am you know subservient to this head coach who I really respect and I really like and I and I can't wait to work for him and I'm I'm excited about being here. So mm-hmm. can that, we just clarify? Yeah. He's going to be thirty and twenty nine at the end of the season, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some catch up to play. Well, he's got some 